Thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for everyone that's on Zoom with us and anybody that watches later. We ask for your presence. We ask for your word to be relevant for us today, God, that we can understand the relevance and understand in our hearts what you would have us know. Open our eyes, open our ears, and help us to share your gospel with the world. And we just thank you for your help today, God, and we love you. Thank you, Jesus. If you hear one in the stillness filled the heaven on crucifixion day. Some say it rained. I don't know if it's true. Well, I can just imagine 10,000 angels cry. That would seem like rain to me and you. The angels all stood ready to take him from the tree. They waited for the words from his voice. And when he asked the father, why hast thou forsaken me? They watched the savior die of his own choice. I've never seen 10,000 angels cry, but I'm sure they did as they stood by and watched the Savior die. God turned his head away. He couldn't bear the sight. It must have looked like rain when 10,000 angels cry. As the sun slipped away, the skies turned to gray. And when Jesus gave his all, that's when the tears began to fall. I can't sing this song. I've never seen 10,000 angels cry, but I'm sure they did as they stood by and watched the Savior die. God turned his head away he couldn't bear the sight. It must have looked like rain when 10,000 angels cry. Oh, it must have looked like rain when 10,000 angels cry. That is a hard song to sing. I remember when I was a young girl and my um, dad wasn't going to church and I was pretty young, I think, I was maybe eight or nine. And the boys would probably have to correct me, but I went in the living room and I it was on a Saturday and I begged him, I said, Daddy, please come to church. And he said, oh, well, I have a pool tournament tomorrow. And I said, but you can do that anytime. I, I just want you to come to church. I don't want you to die and go to hell. I just told him, I want you to come to heaven. And he just gave me a hug and he said he loved me. And I remember I was in um, the nursery, which looked over the sanctuary. And my sister-in-law, Sandra, was in there. I think Marsha might have been with their kids. And I was looking through the window and listening. And the choir was singing. He could have called 10,000 angels. 
and I didn't know, but my dad had walked in and he was sitting down by my mom and he stood up while that song was singing and he went to the altar and he received the spirit of the Lord. And I just knew that God answered my prayer. And my dad loved God. He never didn't love God. He just was like all of us. We get lazy and, you know, we do whatever we want to do that's fun. <laughs> but that day, they sang that song. He could have called them 10,000 angels. And this song makes me think of it <laughs> as well. But um it's beautiful because that's true. Jesus, he could have called 10,000 angels to rescue him from the enemy that was beating him. But he knew what he was there for. And he loved us more. He loved us more. And, and yes, I imagine that the angels were crying because you think about those warring angels we've been talking about and you think about where it talks about that um, the angels rejoice for one that gives their life to God. So we know they have emotions. And so I can imagine that they wanted so much to just rush down and snatch him right off that tree. But they held back because they knew the purpose and they stopped and they allowed it to continue. And Jesus didn't call out for them. He said, thy will be done. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice for us. Thank you so much, Lord. All right. Well, I'm going to read from Matthew 22. And Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And let's remember, this is a parable, and this is talking about God giving a wedding feast for Jesus. And let's see what this, how this transpires. This is what we're dealing with today. He sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they wouldn't come. Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who are invited, I've prepared my dinner, my oxen, my fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off one to his farm and another to his business. This is so much like what we see today. While the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully and killed them. People were angry because... They were being asked to come and join in with the things of God. The king was angry. He sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. He said, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. We have to remember to wear our, our robe of righteousness. We have to remember our daily commitment to God and the preparation of our hearts. That we are prepared to join in that great feast that we will be in one of these days. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully. And you do not care about anyone's opinion for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then what you think. 
Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. They brought him a denarii, and Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. The same day, the Sadducees came to him who say that there is no re resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother must marry the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. So to the second and third, down to the seventh. After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all had her. But Jesus answered them, you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. He is not a God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question saying, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. That's a lot <laughs> that Jesus gave us. And as I said in the, the feast, the wedding feast, I feel so strong about um, us being, giving the word to people. And there will be a lot of people that won't respond, that will be too busy, that will walk away too busy for the things of God. It's It's not easy because we may have things that we need. We may have a comfortable life or, you know, we have our families. We're busy with our families. We're busy with our jobs. So we have to decide what God would have us do in the midst of all of that. Some people may be called to go and do more in a way that doesn't involve other things in this world, really. But then there's a lot of us that have families or have other things going on. So I just ask God to show us, show us what he wants us to see, help us to know how to be a witness, help us to know how to bring his word with grace and truth to love our neighbor as ourself. And in that love that we tell them, the truth because that truly is showing them the love of Christ when we tell them the truth otherwise we are lying to them and we are putting them in a position to not ever know or to think that nothing is ever going to happen to them or there's no such thing as hell or there's no such thing as heaven you know there's so many beliefs out there and people that choose to decide that the bible is just you know, some story that was made up. There's too much proof. 
that the Bible is true. And, and we know that it is not going to return void to God. And so because we know it's incumbent upon us to share in whatever way we can. And I have not been, I have not shared in the way I should. And I know that God has opened doors that sometimes I shut. But I just say today that we go forward and that we ask God to open a door to show us, to guide us and direct our feet and our voice, what we speak to others and everybody to pray for this world, for the children, for the nations, for America, for them to know Jesus. People need the Lord more than anything right now. And everybody can go ahead and understand.